India's trade performance. Whole world has recognized India as superpower of 21st century. India is the youngest country in the world, growing at a rate of more than 8%. Large population of India provides market to the countries of the world. At the same time, it provides opportunities to India in terms of extracting the potentials of its manpower and other resources to emerge as real superpower. India's foreign trade should also reflect her potentials to emerge as a superpower. The present liberal trading policies taken by the Indian government have facilitated the establishment of a just international economic order, setting up a symbiotic relation between the developed and the developing countries. The liberal reforms launched so far have attracted many investors to participate in the India's international trade. The penetration of the Indian market by several multinational companies has encouraged many Indian companies to strive for international recognition. For instance, India is one of the major exporting nations with an overflow of scientists in the field. India's international trade has been influenced by the Indian external economic environment of 2005-06 and 2006-07. The growth in output and trade of India's international trade in spite of increasing global imbalances, protracted Doha negotiations, volatile international crude oil prices and inflation have been found to be increasing. In this lesson, we are going to study the performance of India in foreign trade. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to assess the performance of India's foreign trade since independence. Describe the changing profile of India's exports. Know what are the principal imports of India. India's foreign trade followed a pattern common to all underdeveloped countries, exporting raw materials and food in exchange for manufactured goods. The only difference in India's case was that it also exported processed textiles, yarn and jute goods. Stabilization and structural adjustment measures taken in 1991, including 50% currency devaluation, have improved the country's balance of trade position by depressing imports and making exports more competitive in the world market. Except during the year of the Korean War, 1951-52, to imports averaged Rs. 662 crores during the remaining four years of the first plan. The level of imports was substantially higher during the second planned period when it averaged Rs. 976 crores a year. During the third planned period, there was a sustained rise in the level of imports except in 1961-62 when imports fell by Rs. 33 crores to Rs. 1107 crores. Imports rose progressively during the next four years reaching a level of Rs. 1409 crores in 1965-66. Over the third plan, imports averaged Rs. 1245 crores a year. There was a significant change in the commodity composition and directional pattern of exports during the third plan. The dynamism in India's exports during the third plan period is attributable to the increase in the production base both agricultural and industrial, and the generally favorable climate of international trade. Exports 1966-67 aggregated to Rs. 1157 crores, which was lower by 8% than exports during 1965-66. In the subsequent two years, exports rose to Rs. 1199 crores and Rs 1360 crores respectively. The decline in exports in 1966-67 was mainly due to drought conditions and the consequent supply constraints on export of agricultural goods. Preparations which were imported largely under the PL480 program were an important component of total imports. Imports of fertilizers recorded an almost continuous rise. Imports of iron and steel and non-ferrous metals taken together 
declined during the first two years but rose in the subsequent years. Commodities and agriculture based products namely raw cotton, oil cakes, tobacco, spices, tea, coffee, cotton piece goods and jute manufactures. Other contributory factors were the temporary dislocation of trade caused by devaluation, depressed demand conditions in the world market and the time taken by trade in adjusting itself to the new export promotion measures. Over the last 60 years, India's foreign trade has undergone a complete change in terms of composition and direction. The exports cover a wide range of traditional and non-traditional items while imports consist mainly of capital goods, petroleum products, raw materials and chemicals to meet the ever increasing needs of a developing and diversifying economy. For about 40 years from 1950 to 1990 foreign trade of India suffered from strict bureaucratic and discretionary controls. Similarly, foreign exchange transactions were tightly controlled by the government and the Reserve Bank of India. The Foreign Trade Policy 2004-09 announced by the government in August 2004 had visualized a doubling of India's merchandise trade in five years with an enabling policy framework and concerted efforts by the government for facilitating a favorable environment for international trade, exports have nearly tripled between 2001-02 and 2006-07. India exceeded the export target for 2007-08 by $3 billion, achieving an overall growth rate of about 29%, appreciation of rupee notwithstanding. Exports reached a level of $162.9 billion during 2007-08, registering a growth of 29.02% over the same period last year, according to the final figures released by the Directorate General of Commercial Intelligence and Statistics. According to the provisional data released by DGCI and S, India's merchandise exports during August 2008 at US dollar 16 billion registered a higher growth of 26.9% than 18.2% during August 2007. The overall exports during April August 2008 at US dollar 81.3 billion witnessed a growth of 35.3%, much higher than 19.3% growth recorded a year ago. Services, particularly finance, insurance and transportation of goods are traditional complements to goods trade. With the spread of telecommunications and computer technologies, virtually all commercial services have become tradable across borders. The trend of globalization, reinforced by liberalization policies and the removal of regulatory obstacles, has fueled steady growth of international investment and current account deficit CAD mirrors the saving investment gap in national income accounts and thus constitutes foreign savings. The challenge before the emerging market economies is to leverage foreign savings to promote domestic growth without having the long-term consequences of external payment imbalances. However, current account deficits per se need not necessarily enhance the productive capacity and thus overall GDP growth. This would depend on underlying component factors leading to the current account deficit. The distinction between gross capital inflow and net inflow is useful. As the latter must equal the CAD, there is no way in which net use of foreign savings can increase without an increase in the CAD. The gross inflow can, however, increase to the extent that it is offset by gross outflow in the form of buildup of foreign exchange reserves reduction in government external debt or outward investment by entrepreneurs. Higher gross inflows have value even if net flows do not increase to the same extent as they can improve competition in the financial sector, improve the quality of intermediation and the average productivity of investment and thus raise the growth rate of the economy. The challenge before government is to maximize these benefits while minimizing the cost of exchange rate management. 
the rise and fall of the current account balance during the period 2001 to 2607 has been driven largely by the goods and services balance with the two having virtually the same pattern as a proportion of GDP. The surplus from factor income including remittances which fluctuated between 2% and 3% of GDP has helped moderate the substantial deficit on the trade account. Both the trade, goods and services balance and the factor surplus improved between 2001 and 2003-04 leading to an improvement of the current account and both reversed direction thereafter resulting in a declining trend in the current account. On the eve of independence in 1947, foreign trade of India was typical of a colonial and agricultural economy. Trade relations were mainly confined to Britain and other Commonwealth countries. Exports consisted chiefly of raw materials and plantation crops. Over the last 60 years, India's foreign trade has undergone a complete change in terms of composition and direction. The exports cover a wide range of traditional and non-traditional items. In view of the current wave of worldwide globalization, India has taken major initiatives to diversify its export base as also their destinations. Exports cover over 7,500 commodities to about 190 countries while imports from 140 countries account for over 6,000 commodities. Recently, electronics hardware and software exports have increased in a significant way, and these are mainly to the advanced countries. According to disaggregated data of exports by principal commodities available for the period 2007-08, Commodity-wise data on exports during April-January 2007-08 showed a pickup in the growth of primary products while manufactured exports witnessed moderation in growth. According to the final figures released by the Directorate General of Commercial Intelligence and Statistics, India's exports during 2007-08 exceeded the target by US dollar 3 billion to touch US dollar 162.9 billion registering a growth of 29.02 percent over the same period previous fiscal. The export target for 2007-08 was US dollar 160 billion. The sectors that drove exports during the period were engineering goods, petroleum products, gems and jewelry, agriculture, ores and minerals. The import of non-ferrous metals stood at 8.8% of the total imports and occupies second place in total import. The trends in India's imports for the year 2006-07, April to October, compared with the corresponding period of 2005-06. Oil imports recorded a higher growth than non-oil imports, whereas there was a decline in import of pearls, precious and semi-precious stones. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Export includes selling and buying goods and services between two or more countries. Right or wrong? Wrong. Foreign trade means buying goods and services from foreign countries. Right or wrong? Wrong. EU stands for European Union. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Indian exports have come a long way in value terms from the time of gaining independence in 1947. The total value of India's merchandise exports increased from US dollar 1.3 billion in 1950-51 to US dollar 63.8 billion in 2003-04, a compound rate of 7.6%. Trade growth has picked up post-liberalization of 1991. The composition of trade is now dominated by manufactured goods and services. India services exports share in global exports is more than double of that of Indian manufacturing exports. East Asian countries, particularly China, have become a major trading bloc. 
there is a huge untapped potential for India foreign trade in years to come. The sectoral composition of India's exports indicates that the share of primary products in exports have declined from 23.8% in 1990-91 to 12.4% in 2003-04. On the other hand, the share of manufactured goods has increased from 71.6% in 1990-91 to 77.8% in 2003-04. The composition of imports showed much less change than that of exports. POL continues to be a single major item of, of import with its share stabilizing at 30-31% at level. The share of capital goods imports shows the sharpest rise of 4.9 percentage points in 2006-07 over 2000-2001.